Hi, this is Sumit here, Sumit Seat. And what I'm going to be talking about today, I'm going to be talking about a topic which in my opinion is a topic that we all struggle with. I struggle with it. The people whom I meet struggle with it. And if there's one thing that we all want to do in our life, think about it. What's our ultimate goal in life? Think about it for a moment. Is it to have a lot of money? Sure. Why? Think about it. Some of you want to be entrepreneurs. Some of you want to be just free. Retire. Why do you want it? You want all that money because you love to see, <laughs> you know, those paper notes? Of course not. You want that because you believe it's going to make you happy. Isn't that true? If you're seeking peace, what's peace? It's a form of happiness. And that's our ultimate goal in life. And we're all trying to chase it. But what comes in the way? Some unpleasant emotion. You can start your day well and then something would happen and you would feel angry, frustrated, disgusted. And if you're lucky, it will remain for a short moment. But for many of us, it's chronic. Angry people are angry for long durations. And people are depressed. Well, they're depressed for, for just far too long a time for nobody's comfort. Statistics show that on an average, I mean, this is just post the pandemic, 42% Indians experienced depression. And it's not just true for the full population. Let's talk about the young, bubbly, successful millennials, Gen Y, Gen Z. Everything's going good for them, right? But the reality is, there's more depression today than ever before. So, since this topic is so prevalent, and, and I've been struggling with it for all my life, you know, I thought about it deeply. And I have a different perspective on it now after having lived life for four and a half decades, right? So you, you develop some perspectives. And of course, a lot of these perspectives come from listening to good, to good or great people. And I thought of it, and I thought of two things. Number one, why do we experience these unpleasant emotions? Why? I'm sure there's a reason, right? And second, if we experience it, which we do, is there a way to effectively manage them? So let's talk about these two topics today. Make sense? So think about it. Think about nature. Everything in this universe is created for a reason. Would you agree with that? I mean, everything? Think about it. Uh, let's talk about a human body. You take any other animal. Every aspect of that animal or human has been created because it's aiding that species survival. Am I right? I mean, I just thought of it. Why do men have beards? I, I, I never thought of it. But maybe there's a hypothesis that we were the hunters and, you know, if animals would attack us, predators would attack us, that would kind of give us some kind of protection. Wow. I mean, I mean, if you get wet and you see your fingers getting, you know, wrinkly, it's simply because it's giving you that better grip. So everything in this universe has a purpose. And if everything has a purpose, I'm sure emotions, unpleasant emotions also have a purpose, right? So what could the purpose be? Now, when I think of it, I want to talk about um, a few people whom I really admire. And one of those people whom I really admire is a gentleman called Dr. Paul McLean. Now, he wrote a fine book, a very fine book, many, many, many years ago. It was simply called The Triune Brain, okay? Uh, and if you haven't read the book, no sweat at all. He, he, what he does is he talks about how human beings evolved. There was a time when we were single-celled creatures, and then we became, um, you know, water creatures, amphibians, reptiles, mammals, and then ultimately humans. Now... When did emotions really come in? Did emotions always exist? Well, maybe they did. But think about the emotions of a reptile. 
I mean, isn't it very simple? What does a reptile do? Just fight or flight, right? And we were reptiles once upon a time. And then what happened? Then we, you know, we became mammals. Why did we become mammals? Well, we became mammals because we wanted to survive. You know, we could be in groups. And that is the time when we started getting a larger spectrum of emotions. Fight or flight or freeze became, became, became a big rainbow of emotions. And now come to think of it, if I have to just categorize emotions in, in two categories, pleasant or unpleasant, well, every emotion has a meaning, right? And a purpose. Well, I'm not going to talk about the pleasant emotions because I think we all know how to deal with it. Nobody's ever come to me and said, oh, I'm so happy. What should I do with it? <laughs> Nobody has asked that question. But the real challenge is people do have a huge challenge overcoming unpleasant emotions, right? So if everything in this universe is made for a purpose and that purpose is our survival, isn't an unpleasant emotion also helping us survive? Let's take an example. And let's take an example of a mammal. <laughs> let's talk about a deer in the jungle. Okay? A deer, it's, it's, it's eating grass, fine. And then it suddenly hears the roar of a lion. What does it do? Stops eating grass. And then what? It starts running. And it runs and runs and runs and runs and runs till it stops. And it's safe. Starts eating grass once again. Who saved the deer? Who? It was one thing. It was an unpleasant emotion called fear. Now come to think of it. Oh, it was mother nature trying to save the deer. What fear did is, it came with two gifts. Two. Which are those two gifts? Now, now nature wanted to communicate with the deer. And wanted to give it the signal, hey, run or you're going to be dead. So that first gift was a message. And along with that gift came the second one. A lot of energy. The deer couldn't have been lazy at that moment. Could it have been? Of course not. And it ran and ran and ran. Where did that energy come from? It came from that gift called fear. And when that fear actually go away, the moment the deer was safe, it felt safe, felt, feeling. So it was literally like, you know, Mother Nature giving that awesome gift. And when that gift played its part, it just left the deer. Now, does that happen only with deers? Of course not. It happens with us too. On an any average day, we're going to experience a spectrum of unpleasant emotions. You got a mail from a client and that completely messed up your day. Made you angry. Or your kid did something. Or your friend said something. And of course, we've got enough of news happening <laughs> which is going to trigger some kind of unpleasant emotion. Now that's reality. Now what do we do with it? We've just figured out these unpleasant emotions are there for a purpose and the purpose is to serve you. They're there to help you survive. Now, what do we do with them? Let's look at the different choices. Can we simply avoid them? Hmm? Suppress them? Well, I know you do it. I do it too. And if you do that, what happens to you? Does the emotion just go away? Let's say you're angry and you keep suppressing it, suppressing it, suppressing it. I mean, we, we, we wish it disappears, but does it disappear? No. It actually just, it just becomes stronger and stronger. You're feeling sad. You suppress it. Now it doesn't go. So it's like Mother Nature first gives you the emotion. It's like a whisper. 
if you don't listen to it then mother nature might might speak to you <laughs> by making the emotion stronger you still don't listen to it oh mother nature is going to scream at you the emotion becomes like way stronger and if you still don't listen to it <laughs> nature can kill you it's a fact as per cdc i'm just quoting them if you believe them 90% of the illnesses that you and i experience in our life you know why we experience them because of stress and 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 the stress is because we did not know how to resolve those emotions and because we did not resolve those emotions they were just there they were just there they, they didn't go anywhere they they were just there right just became stronger and stronger and stronger and all the gentlemen out here who are listening to me boys and i'm not sh i'm not saying this doesn't apply to girls or women but i'm a i'm a man so i can speak <laughs> from a man's perspective how many got it raw when you told when you were a kid hey be a boy come on be a man so what aren't you a human being and you know what that's done to you it's made you actually weaker inside so if you can't suppress it if you can't deny it you can't wish it just goes away then what do we do is there a more appropriate way of dealing with emotions well the more i think of it i realize actually there's only one and i mean it there is only one and what's that well feel it feel it yeah feel it because only if you feel it you'll get two gifts the two awesome gifts gift number 1 mother nature is speaking to you listen like the deer listened that was a important message imagine if the deer did not listen or let's say the deer had attended a motivational lecture where there was no fear <laughs> okay what would have happened to the deer it would be dead but no 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 the deer listened and when the deer listened it got the message the message was run if you don't you will lose your life and second that awesome gift called energy to act on it that's exactly how we can deal with our emotions it's a very simple message so think about what emotions are you experiencing right now in your life yeah think about it and i'm going to take the liberty of being a little vulnerable in front of you and i'm going to share a few of the emotions that i experience and i'll share my interpretation of what nature is trying to tell me and that interpretation only happens if i don't think much so let's talk about talk about the emotions that i experience a uh, massive fear yes let me explain massive fear well during pandemic times not that was a couple of years ago from being an extremely busy man who had his calendar blocked for months in advance and who what a beautiful life you know meeting people talking counseling training i just told you what i do and then the pandemic hit and all the work that i was doing came to a standstill what did i experience anxiety what did i decide to do suppress it what happened it didn't go what for the happen it became stronger what for the happen i couldn't sleep what for the happen i gained lots of weight a lot of it still not gone what further happened i kept on wanting to be that strong guy till a very dear friend of mine spoke to me and said so what how's life and i said it's all right he said no it's not all right tell me what are you feeling and a man to man talk we had and i told him you know what 
I wake up in the morning, but I decide not to wake up. I put the blanket on because I'm trying to avoid this world. Why are you doing that? Because I'm so scared. Scared about what? What's going to happen to this little organization that I built? What's going to happen to those few staff members who have dedicated so many years and their heart and soul to this purpose? They'll all have to go. And you know what my friend said? Good. Good? Yes, good. Why? Why are you saying it's good? Because you understood what you're feeling. And you know what? You accepted the message Mother Nature was giving you. You know what they're telling? She's telling, if you don't do something about this, that's exactly what's going to happen. Your company is going to close down. You will have nothing to do. And you're going to be that unemployed person. And then what did we do? The moment I got that message, oh my God, there was no thinking. It was massive action. Got the team together on Zoom. <laughs> we couldn't meet. And figured out every single thing we could do to reach out to our clients and still add value in this pandemic world. And you know what we did? And then what happened? We also started doing things that we never did before. Like, like using technology, building an e-learning firm, building a technology-based assessment firm. And you know what? We grew like we never did before. All of this because Mother Nature gave me an amazing gift called fear. There are just far too many emotions. But you know what? The best part about Mother Nature is nature doesn't confuse the message is very, very crisp. All you need to do is not mess up the message with too much thinking. If you're frustrated, there's a reason. You know what it is. If you're feeling lonely, you know what it is. If you're depressed, you know what it is. Just listen. And just that act of listening will make you take massive action. And after you take the massive action, my dear friend, you're going to be stronger than ever before, better than ever before. And hence, I would say, an unpleasant emotion is your best friend. Thank you so much.